Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'll be giving a preview of the new features in On One Photo Raw 2023.5, which is their new update, it's out today. It's a mid-year update, it's a free update if you're a subscriber, and they also now have a 30-day trial. There's a lot of goodness happening in this update. And uh, before I do that, I wanna tell you a short little story, and of course, it will relate to what we're talking about today. But the story is I first started editing photos about 15 or so years ago. And you know, some of the sliders in the software that I uh, used at the time were kind of easy to figure out. I mean, highlights and shadows, contrast, saturation, vibrance, things like that. Pretty simple, straightforward, easy to understand. But there were two words and two things, concepts, if you will, that literally struck fear in me uh, to such an extent that I avoided them for many years, honestly. And now, fast forward to today, and I'm comfortable with these ideas and the tools that allow you to accomplish these things, but these were scary, scary things. And the two things that I'm talking about, the first one is masking. I had no idea what that meant. It was super confusing to me. It was hard to figure out how to make it work. Uh, and the second one was curves. And curves was equally intimidating and scary to me. And these tools are super powerful and super amazing and absolutely something that I think you need to learn how to use in order to get really great results. Well, part of the beauty of On One has been that their masking has been really good for so long. I mean, they've got Super Select AI, Mask AI, all these tools, and they're now even better. The masking tools are better. The Curves tool is better because it's easier and it's more visual and it's just so much easier for someone who's maybe not really well experienced at some of these tools to get their arms around this stuff quickly and more easily and that's one of the great things in fact that's probably in my opinion the best thing about this update is that they've just made these complicated things so much easier so let's get into it now uh, you may have seen already a previous video i did a while back about resize ai and how it has face recovery that's now integrated into 2023.5 so i won't be covering that in this video but they have a new refined mask brush update that's amazing they have now foreground and background masking and additional updates around that. They have a new encircle mask option, uh, and that just comes in super handy. And of course, the curves thing that I'm talking about. So first, let's talk about refine mask. Now, refine mask is generally something that you would use, as the name implies, to refine a mask. So I'm on a local adjustment. I've really done nothing to this photo, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to use mask AI, and I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to grab the architecture and the flora and the natural ground and the mountain. So I basically gathered up everything except the sky. And if I'll just click apply, now this is set to a negative one exposure on this local adjustment. So all those areas will get dark. And if you take, oops, if you take a look at the mask, you can see it's covered the tree. But the problem is the tree has a lot of stuff of sky that you can see through kind of behind that. And so if I was darkening that entire thing, I'm going to darken that bit of the sky and this is not going to look right. It would just look wrong. And so that's where you come in with refine. And now they've got this update. You can come in and I'm going to increase the size of my mouse. And what I'm going to do is just paint over the entire area that I want to refine the mask for. Okay, so let's say something about like that, and now I'm gonna let go on my mouse, and it's gonna do its typical rendering where it kind of figures out and it does its intelligence, and it's gonna come back with a really nicely refined mask like that. You can see that the darkness has gone away. It's still a negative one exposure. I can drop it further, and you can see that that sky is still shining through. But of course, the best part uh, and the best way to see it is for me to hit the O key and show you the mask. And you can now see it's not just a big white blob where the tree exists. This is actually showing the sky through those tree branches and the gaps there. So that's update uh, number one that I'm super excited about is that refined mask because it is really going to come in handy to help you do things like hair and branches in which I will point out at the top here, there's actually some drop down options including hair and branches, which is the default and that's what I used here to really isolate those branches and separate, for lack of a better word, that sky behind it so it was not being in, in, impacted even though the branches in front of the sky were. So that's update number one and I'm really excited for this because it's gonna come in super handy because I shoot a lot of landscapes and I'm often needing to figure out how to mask around tree branches. Update number two, or the second thing I'm really excited about, is that they've added some additional enhancements to the automatic masking. And so I did basically an AI auto kind of thing. The photo started like that. It currently looks like that. 
I'm in effects, I'm gonna add filter, and when you come over here to the masking, you can see that there's now a foreground and a background option, and that just comes in really handy, this foreground and background. It's trained to identify people, animals, and food. Now, my hope is in the future, it will pick up other things as well, but if I hover over here, you can see it's highlighting all the horses, which is coincidentally exactly what I want. I wanna click on foreground, and I'm gonna click on tone enhancer, and it's isolated all of those horses. It's gonna build the mask for me. Let me show you that. There it is, there's my horses in the field. They're in white, which means whatever I do is gonna impact those areas. And what I'm gonna do is just increase the exposure to make them a little bit brighter so that they stand out a little bit more against that background. Now you will also notice if you drop down here in this menu, you've also got the paint in and paint out options, which are included here, which allows you to really pick what you're doing quickly and easily. But I just love that that foreground and background is gonna pick those things up automatically and give me that opportunity to just isolate those subjects and fix them super quick. So there's the before, a little bit darker horses, and the after, a little bit brighter. And of course, you can copy this mask if you wanted to, maybe go add dynamic contrast to give them a little uh, kind of pop, that sort of thing. The point is, it's automatic, and so it's gonna save you so much time. So going back to what I said at the beginning, masking, which is confusing, I think, for people still to this day, because, you know, admittedly, it's a little bit of a complicated subject, but things like this just make it so much quicker and easier. I just love that. Okay, what I wanna talk about in this photo, and this is a stock photo of a bird, is masking update number three, which is encircle mask option as part of the refine brush. And it really allows you to add or subtract to existing masks quickly and automatically. So again, I'm in a local adjustment. I'm gonna come down here and pick mask AI. And in this case, I'm gonna choose animal. And as you can see, it does a great job. It, it found that bird automatically and really accurately. I'm gonna go ahead and click apply. I'm in paint in, and let's go ahead and do that. Now it's darker because this is defaulting to a negative one, but actually what I wanna do is I wanna brighten that a little bit. But here's the thing. If you look at my mask, I'm gonna click, oh, it's the bird. But the bird has a tail, and the bird is on a branch. And so this, for me, is a great example of when I would use that encircle mask option. So once again, I just go to refine, and I click that, and I'm gonna choose a smaller mouse. So I'm just using the left bracket key to shrink that. And what I wanna do is get the branch and the tail of the bird because all the adjustments I'm gonna to make to the bird and the branch, I want them all to be the same. So this is a great place where I can come in and add or enhance or refine the mask that was automatic. So I just come in here and I just draw along the edges. And all I do is, as the name implies, it's called encircle mask. And so the point is that you're just encircling it. In other words, you're going around the edges. You don't need to cover or paint in the entire inner section of the branch, for example. You just circle it and it will figure it out for you. Okay, and once you're done encircling, again, don't fill in the center. You can just let go and once again, it's gonna render and kind of figure it out and then it's gonna apply that same edit to those areas. So now if I hit the O key to show you my mask, you can see I've got the branch and the tail in addition to the bird. So it figured out the bird automatically with mask AI because I chose animal, but it didn't get everything that I wanted, which is okay because it was supposed to identify the animal and it did, but it missed the tail. And of course it didn't pick up the branch, but going into refine and using that encircle mask option, it allows me to quickly gather up that bit and add it to the mask. So you can add or subtract from a mask using this uh, technology. Now that I've got that, maybe what I wanna do is copy this mask and go add another local adjustment. And then I'm gonna come in here and paste this mask and I'm gonna invert it because what I wanna do now is background. So I've isolated the area that I wanted to uh, adjust with the first mask. And now I'm gonna come in here and I want it to be a little bit darker and I want it to be a little bit cooler. So maybe something like that, maybe a little bit of tint as well. I just wanna change the look of the photo. And look at that, I mean, honestly, a couple of clicks, I dragged and painted a little bit with my mouse. And honestly, I went from that photo to that photo quickly and easily. And that was some fairly complicated masking, which didn't really take a lot of effort on my part. And so if you've been a person that's been a little bit of afraid of masking, I think you're really gonna love this update. Okay, now I wanna talk about the fourth major thing. And there's a lot of things that are updated in this version. I mean, there's new camera support and things like that. They've squashed some bugs, I'm sure. There's lots of other things, but these are kind of the big things that I'm touching on. And by the way, I'll come back and talk about more of these in a little bit more detail in future videos. 
If you'd like to see some of those videos, let me know down below. Just leave me a comment or give me a thumbs up on this video. But I'm going to click Add Filter, and this is the one I want to talk about, Curves. So Add Filter and click on Curves. Now, as I said earlier, masking and curves were two terms that just scared me and um, I think, frankly, uh, intimidate people. And I don't know which one is more intimidating, but I was intimidated by both of them for so many years. But if I had on one PhotoRaw 2023.5 back then, I would not have been intimidated because it's just gotten so much easier. So the thing with curves is it's massive control over the light and the color. So light is contrast, highlights, shadows, midtones, all those kind of things. But then you've also, that's the all, which is what they call the tone curve. But then you've got the red and the green and the blue color channels. And you will notice now there's a nice grid. These little handles on these dots are bigger. The blue line on the uh, blue channel, the green line, or, or I should say the line is blue in the blue channel. The line is green on the green cha channel and the line is red on the red channel. But it also, the other thing that's so great about the colors is sometimes you may not remember, wait, red and yep, no, wait, is it red and blue? No, it's, it's red and cyan. Well, you can see it. There's a visual representation. Green and magenta, easy. By the way, because it shows you where that color is if you drag your line in that direction. So let's say I want to take the midtones towards the magenta. I'm not going to do that in this photo, but if I wanted to, you can see that I can easily go to magenta because I have a visual representation of where magenta is. I love that. It just makes it so much easier. By the way, another thing that they did is you can just right click and I can just remove that control point and that just takes care of that, which is super easy and quick. But here's the thing in with curves is I was always looking at it and, and you know in the past you didn't have such a grid and you didn't have the the shading here where it's a lot brighter up there and a lot darker down here and it was always like well I want to I want to maybe get these bits of the highlights maybe I want to pull them down a little bit so it was always hard to figure out where do I put that control point on this line hmm I don't really know well now you have this eyedropper and you literally just get the eyedropper and you go click right there and as you can see, it just dropped a control point on the line for me. So I know exactly where that is. So I can then come in and do whatever it is I want to do. If I want to make them a little darker, we can see it's shaded darker on the right side. So I just need to pull this kind of in that direction and those tones will come down a little bit. So it's a great visual representation of that. But also now you've got this in and out. So you can actually just come in and you can highlight that number and then use your up and down arrow key. And with up, I can just start you can see I'm going brighter. I'm increasing the value. And so those uh, parts of the, uh, th those tones, those highlight tones are getting uh, brighter. Or I can just down arrow now and those uh, parts or those highlight tone areas are getting darker. So it's a really neat way to just simplify the use of this tool and give you incredible control over it. So let's say I got those where I want it. Well, I can go get that again. I can get this dropper and use it multiple times. Maybe I want to come over here and get these little tones here, these kind of grayish, not dark, but not light. I'm going to click there. Will it put it right there? Great. That's, that's perfect. And maybe I just want to make those a little bit darker because what I wanted to do is create a little bit more contrast in my image. And so you can see that really quickly, I've created a more contrasty image, which is what I was going for, just by adjusting that tone curve by using the eyedropper. So it's super quick and easy. There it is before, and there it is now. And then if I want to come in and do some colors, I could say, well, hey, it's a sunset. I kind of want to amp those up. Uh, let me see. Do I want to go tell you what I'll do? I'll do red, but I only want red in some of these kind of colors of the clouds. We can do the same thing with the eyedropper. Just come in here and pick some of those tones. And there it is. And then I can just take that and drag it slightly toward the red. And you can see I start getting a little bit more red into those areas. So maybe I'll pull that back a little bit. Maybe it's a little bit too much. But the point is you have a lot of control now that you, uh, you had in the past, but you had to do it all manually. So they've made this probably the most complicated tool in any editor. That's not specific to On1. That's the same in Lightroom or Photoshop or any app. Curves is pretty much the most complicated tool. They just made it simple for people. And if you learn Curves, I think that you will learn how to use really any software and any tool because if you can figure out how to use Curves, then you can figure out anything else. And this update with all these changes is a great way to help you figure out how to use Curves. So that's kind of my first look preview of all the new stuff that's in 2023.5. Photo Raw, of course. Buy on one. It's fantastic. Honestly, this is a great update. Masking updates are insane. Update to the curves, as I just showed you, just makes things so easy. 
and gives you incredible control both at masking and the curves updates give you incredible control over your edits and of course including the resize ai update with face recovery helps it's just a fantastic update i'm really happy with what they've done i'll continue to make videos about it i want to thank you guys for watching and if you enjoyed this video check out that video about on one and i'll be back soon with more thanks for watching my friends you guys take care i'll see you soon until then adios